To the Nozon. It's great to see you again. My name is Wanja. My name is Charlie. And I'm Marara. Hey Marara, how are you doing today? I am very well, thank you, Charlie. I'm also very happy because the Nozon has been teaching me so much. I feel like such a clever lion right now. Wow, that is excellent. <laughs> great. Are you ready to have fun? Yes, a lot of fun. <laughs> very good. We're going to have a lot more fun today on the Nozon. But first, let's go meet our new studio guests. Hello everyone! Hello! How you doing? Fine! Why don't you all say a big hello to everyone who's watching at home? Hello! Excellent. We're glad to have you here with us helping us with today's show. We are going to have lots and lots of fun. Are you having fun? Yes! Yeah, yeah, and I'm also having lots of fun. Uh, hi Marara, have you met our studio guests? Hello everyone! Hello Marara! Oh, I love making friends. Now these ones look like they will be a lot of fun, don't they? Yes, and they're also very, very smart. Now because they're smart, they won't have any trouble telling us what this week's No Zone buzzwords are. Yes! So before that, who can tell me what the words are teaching us about? The fun. I hope you have your pen and paper ready because our guests today are going to tell us our fun buzzwords. Are you ready? Yes. Very good. Which ones are they? Tractor. Farm. Work. Plow. Fence. Now for you at home, I hope you wrote them all down. Try and remember as many of them as possible because a few of them will appear in our next program. That's right. But now, it's time for... The Junction Juniors! D-I-G um, D-I-G N-I-T-Y hey! Sorry I'm late everyone. I had to help my mom. There's still a lot of work left to do in the farm. It's fine. We have to start our meeting now. No, we can't start without Nita and James. We can't start without our own president. I haven't seen Nita and James in school since last week. Where could they be? What if something bad has happened to them? Hmm. You know, today morning when I was coming to school, I saw Snake being arrested by an Ascari. He was selling illegal meat. What is illegal meat? It's meat that isn't from a goat or a cow or a chicken. It's from something else. Ah, uh, Brian, what has illegal meat got to do with meat and James not being here? What if that is why you haven't seen Nita and James in a while? What if Bran is right? What if Snake is making sausages from children? We have to go find Nita and James right now. And make sure Snake didn't find them first. Yep, yeah, let's go. We go. So you are alive. We were so worried. We thought that Snake had gotten you. You have been working all day in the farm. There's been so much work to do. But you shouldn't be missing school. Yeah. Every child has a right to an education, even if there's a lot of work to do at home. We are only here because no one can do it. Our father left us and our mother works all day in the market. This is how we get our food. 
But these weeds are killing our crops. We have been chasing the birds away. The more they fly away, the more they appear. It's as if they are multiplying themselves in the air. Well, we are all here to help you now. If we divide ourselves into teams, we can get work done faster. I will work with Nita to weed this half of your farm. And I'll use the hoe and weed that half of the farm. When we're all done, we can meet in the middle. And then when we're through, we could water the whole farm. Brenna and I will do something to get rid of those birds that are eating the fruits. We need to think of something that will scare away the birds forever. That's a good idea, but... What are birds afraid of? Everyone is afraid of snake. Apart from me. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get snake to stand in the farm every day. We don't have to. We can just build a snake. to make his body. Habiba and I can go find one in the forest. We'll need some old clothes to make it look like a real person. I can help. I will find an old shirt of mine. I can make a head just like snakes. We can use the weeds that we've picked to fill his shirt and make his body. If only we had snakes booted jacket, that would be perfect. Come on, guys. Come on, Bakari, come on. Go, Jamsai Juniors! Yeah! Hi! I'm sorry. It's too heavy. Can you come just? Hey, this is perfect. This looks just like beef. What, man? We don't want people to know that this is bad meat. Hey, don't worry. Everyone thinks it's snake who's done it. We'll see. Yama, yama, yama. Yama. Yamuzi. Yama. 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 So snake wasn't the one selling the illegal meat. No, we need to do something. Snake is innocent. that they were selling illegal meat. Yeah, we need to help Snake. Okay, let's run and tell the Ascari. Hey, wait, okay. what about the farm? I'll stay here and help James and Nita water the your farm. Thanks, Bakari. The chief is very sorry for accusing you of selling illegal meat. 
These children here have discovered who the real culprits are. You are free to go. Thank you very much. How can I ever repay you? I'll give you anything. Even I'll roast for you a special tasty chicken. Anything that you want. Anything? Thank you for helping us. The farm now looks tidier. It's always fun when we help each other, but you should also remember that school is important too. I know that missing school is bad. Next time there's too much work to do, and it's called the Junction Juniors for help. Yes, now we can go to school and have some food. And the birds won't disturb you anymore. Yes! yes! I think we made a very scary scarecrow. Thanks to Snake. Junction Juniors forever! Yes! So, did you all enjoy that? Yes! Did you hear any of the buzzwords? Yes. Which one? I heard the word farm. Very good. What else did you learn from the Junction Juniors? Yes, Kimondo. I learned that you have to go to school even if there is work to be done at home. Very good. Aria? I learned that children have a right to an education. Excellent. Who else heard something? Maria? I learned that selling illegal meat is wrong. And I learned that when we help our friends when they're in trouble, like James and Nita Wa, we make their lives much, much easier. That's right, Marara. Now you have all learned a lot. Do you know what that means? Yes! Very good. It's time for cool words. Welcome back to Cool Words. I understand some of you have made some really good progress with your English work. Well done. Yes, I've been making very good progress, teacher. I've been reading the Nose on comic every week. They are really, really helpful, even with my schoolwork. Well, that's good. I believe today's lesson will also be very helpful. We'll be learning about words that sound the same but are spelled differently. Oh, that sounds like fun. We can think of some words that sound the same but are written differently. Who can think about one of them? Yes, Kamau? Right and right. That's right. Right and right. They sound the same but are spelled differently. Now, we have many examples of words that sound the same but are spelled differently. For example, week and week. Or C and C. Oh, yes. C and C sound the same but they are spelled differently. So what does C mean when it's spelled S-E-E? Hmm. S-E-E. C. See, it's something I do with my eyes. When I look at something, I see it. Like now, I'm looking at you. I use my eyes to see you. Well done. Now, who can tell us what C means when it's spelled S-E-A? Yes, Gikenye? The C is a lot of water in one area. Well done. Yes, Maria? I played in the sea when I went to Mombasa. Well done. Now, I've thought of some words that sound the same but are spelled differently. Two and Two. Hmm. Two and two. They sound exactly the same. And they look almost the same. That's right. And that's why it's very important for you to know the correct use of the words two with a double O and two with a single O. Now let's try making some sentences using the two with a double O. Who can give us a sentence? Yes, Washeke? I can't sleep. My brother is being too noisy. That's great. Your brother is too noisy. Now, we use the two with a double O when we feel there's a lot of something, OK? Yes. Now, who can give us another sentence using the two with a double O? Ooh, let me try, let me try. Yes, Marara. When I chased after the antelope, it ran too fast. <laughs> OK, that's great. Now, who can give us another sentence? Yes, Sichenga? The sun is too hot. Well done. Who can give us another sentence? 
Yes, Kai Kai? My shoes are too big. Very good. I think you all understand the word too. For every other sentence, we use a two with a single O, okay? Yes. I'll go fast. Uh, my friend took me to the shop. Now, who can give us another sentence? Yes, Muria? I like to send letters to my friends. That's great. Now, who can give us one more sentence? Yes, Gikenye? Tomorrow, I am going to play football. Brilliant. OK. I think you've all understood really well the use of two with a double O and two with a single O. But we just need to check. So I have some cards here with me. OK. And I'll give each team a card. And I'll read out some sentences. Now, I want you to hold up your card when you think you have the right answer. OK? And if we think it's a two with a double O, let's call out two. And if it's a two with a single O, just say two. Very good. Now, the first sentence. My grandfather does not work. He is too old. Two. Well done. So let's read the sentence together. My, My grandfather, grandfather does, does not work. work. He, he is too old. Well done. Now, to the next sentence. Today, I will go to school with my friends. Two. two. Oh, that's right. They're right, isn't it, Chapendo? We need to use the short two in this sentence. That's right, Marara. We use the short two when we're saying we're going to school. Now, how about this sentence? The stone looks too heavy. Two. two. Oh, I like the long two. OK, so let's read the sentence together. The, the stone, stone looks, looks too, too heavy. heavy. Well done. How about this sentence? My dog is really greedy. It eats too much. Two. Two. Well done. And finally, last year I went to Kogelo with my family. Two. Two. Excellent. Well, that's it for today on Cool Words. It's now time to get out and about. It's time for... Out There! <laughs> Come on, everyone. Jump on board, our matato. I have something exciting to show you. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> hey, hey! Wait for me! Hey! Hey! Stop! Stop! Wait for me! Stop! Wait! This is Tosha Dairy at Nando Farm. I'm going to show you some wonderful cows. Ah! Here are our friends to show us around. <laughs> Come on, people. Meet the youngest cow on the farm. Her name is Shaba. She was born just 40 minutes ago. When Shaba is a bit older, she will start producing milk. Then she will go and join all the other cows in the farm. In order to produce delicious, creamy milk, cows are fed on highly nutritious feeds, like hay and silage. It's milking time. Wave to the cows as they head to the milking zone. Can you spot Anna? She's the oldest cow on the farm. I bet Shaba will still be producing lots of milk when she's as old as Anna. The cows head into the milking stall one by one. In total, the farm milks 130 cows in one day, and they produce 2,400 liters of milk. The milking is done by a big automatic machine. Imagine how long it would take to milk all these cows with my hands. First, the udders are cleaned and disinfected. Then a disinfected machine is placed onto the udder. Once in place, it begins to suck out the milk. The milk is sucked out of the cow and into the pipes. The milk travels all the way, up and down, over and under, around and along the pipes into the main holding tank. Then it is finally pumped into the milk chunks. Once there is no milk left in the cow, the milking machine is removed and the udders disinfected. Then yippee, the cows are free to go relax and eat more food to make more milk for the next milking time. 
Now it's time for me to work. We have to pack all the milk chunks containing the fresh milk into the van so that it can be taken to the milk processing zone. The milk is poured into a large container so that it can be sterilized. That means removing all the germs and other impurities. <laughs> Look, the kids can't wait for it to be ready to drink. Finally, the milk is put into a branded package, sealed, and at last it is ready to go to the shops. After all our work in the farm, my friend Mr. Okumu was so kind that he gave us a treat, fresh, sweet yogurt, which as we all know is made from milk. Yummy! Kutamu <laughs> Mtupu! So now you know where milk and yogurt comes from, don't you? have someone special to say goodbye to. Anna, the oldest cow. Can you imagine how much milk she will have produced during her many years here on the farm? Maybe you've even bought some of our milk from the shops. Speedy here. Don't go anywhere just yet. I hoped you learned a lot from our visit to the farm. And I know that you enjoy traveling all over the country with me. And here are just some of the other places that I'll be taking you to over the next few weeks on the Nozo. It's good to be healthy. And we find out that doctors are not scared. about a visit to the coast where we can learn how to make coconut oil. And if you love tasty treats, you will really enjoy visiting this biscuit factory. Those are just some of the amazing things still to come on out there. Now it's time to go back to the studio and get to hear from Wanja and Charlie what they thought about our visit to the farm. See you next time, out there. That was great. I've never seen so many cows in a farm before. Neither have I. I mean, it was so lovely to see that farm and it must be great living out there. All that fresh milk and the <laughs> delicious yogurt. Yeah? Oh, I love yogurt, especially the strawberry flavor. Oh, me too, man, <laughs> me too. So, let's all sing the Nozon song. Everyone, come, come and see the greatest thing on your TV. Learning new and exciting stuff. Making homework not so tough. Move your feet and shake your bones. Have some fun in the Nozon. Anywhere because we still have a half hour full of fun right here on the No Zone. good. We're going to have a lot of fun together today. But first, let's remind everyone at home of this week's buzzwords. Tractor. Farm. Work. Plow. Fence. 
Now, before we go on, I just have to ask Marara one question. Yes, Charlie. Now, Marara, could you give us a clue as to what animal Ranger Rukia is going to be teaching us about today? Well, the theme is the farm. So you need to think of a wild animal that looks a bit like a cow, loves to eat grass, and walks for very, very long distances. Hmm. What? Eats grass. It doesn't walk for long. But it walks for long distances. Hmm. Do you have any idea what that is? Well, why don't we all go find out together with Ranger Rukia on Wild Zone. Nose on Rangers. My name is Ranger Rukia, and today I'm going to tell you all about some very interesting animals called wildebeest. Wildebeest have a large head, a shaggy mane, a pointed beard, and sharp carved horns. Both males and females have horns. Wildebeest belong to the antelope family, but because they are so big, I think they look more like cows. Don't you agree? Wildebeest live in the grassy plains and open areas of central, southern, and eastern Africa, particularly the Serengeti in Tanzania and Kenya. I think wildebeest look rather scary. But don't worry, they're herbivores, which means that they don't eat meat. They love eating grass. They think it tastes delicious. Unfortunately for the wildebeest, there are many animals that think they taste delicious. It is the favorite meal for many animals such as lions, cheetahs, wild dogs, and hyenas. A group of wildebeest is called a herd. Wildebeest travel in large herds and are active day and night, eating constantly. Every year, millions of wildebeest travel from Tanzania to Kenya in search of more grass to eat. I told you they love to eat grass. This is called the migration. Isn't it amazing? People travel from all over the world to see the wildebeest migration. These animals are famous. The wildebeest don't travel alone. Thousands of other animals join them on their journey, such as the zebra and the gazelle. Their journey can be very dangerous at times. They have to cross fast-flowing rivers that are full of crocodiles. Watch out! There's a hungry crocodile who wants his lunch. Phew! That was scary. Half a million calves are born at the beginning of the rainy season. Calves learn to walk within 20 minutes of birth and it only takes them a few hours to be able to keep up with the herd. Did you know that the wildebeest can live to be 20 years old? When you think about all the animals that want to eat them and the dangerous journey they make every year, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Well, that's all for now, Nose on Rangers. See you again soon. Bye! Wow! <laughs> Did you all enjoy the program? Yes! That can only mean one thing. It's time for Hot Numbers. Hello everyone and welcome to Hot Numbers. I can see you're bright and ready to go. And the studio guests are also bright and ready to go, aren't you? Yes. Oh, I'm ready to go too. That's why I love the no zone. I like learning new things. Well, today we are going to learn about multiplication. But before we start, I want to check that you know exactly how multiplication works, okay? Oh, good. I always get confused. I love it when you start explaining things. That's good. So I have a tray here and I've got some dry beans with me. Now I'm going to put three beans in one hole at one time. So one, 
two, two three. three. So how many beans do I have there? Three. three. Well done. Now I'm going to put three beans in the container two times. So let's do together. One, two, three. three. And then? One, two, three. So how many beans do I have there? Six. Well done. Now, the last one. So I'm going to put the beans into the container three times, okay? So one, one two, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Aha, so now we have placed three beans in the tray three times. That's right. So how many beans do we have in total? Nine. Great. So this can be written as a sum. So I've put the three beans into the container three times. So that's three multiplied by three. And you've already told me the answer. So what's three multiplied by three? Nine. Well done. So you can see that multiplication is very simple. But the most important thing you need to know is to learn your multiplication tables by heart. Oh, I don't know all the times table, but I can remember the easy ones, the twos, fives, and tens. That's very good, Marara. Now, I'm going to teach you how to multiply much bigger numbers. Who can give me a number with two digits? Yes, Rawia? 43. 43. So we will multiply 43 times 2. Oh, teacher Pendo, it's going to take too long to put two beans on the tray 43 times. That's right, and that's why we need to do this ourselves. So we'll write the sum on the board. So we have 43 multiplied by 2. So how you go about such a sum is that you multiply the bottom number with the unit number, which is? Three. three. Excellent. So what is three times two? Yes, Kimondo? Six. Six. So you write your six under the two. OK? Now, who knows what we need to do next? Um, do we multiply two by the next number, which is four? That's right. Now, after we've multiplied our unit number, we need to multiply our tens number. Now, in 43, which is the tens number? Four. Oh, oh so we need to know two multiplied by four. Oh, I don't know that one. Can somebody help me, please? Yes, Gikenye. Two times four is eight. That's right. So we write our eight under our four. So what does this read? 86. So what is 43 times 2? 86. Well done. Uh, so can we do another one, please, please? Sure. So who can give me another number with two digits? Yes, Sichenga. 54. 54. So we will multiply 54 by 3, OK? Oh, 54 is such a big number. I can't wait to find out the answer to this sum. 54 times 3. Now, who can tell me how to go about this? Oh, I can, I can. Yes, Marara. I think we started by multiplying the bottom number, which is a 3, by the unit number, which is a 4. That's right. So what is 4 times 3? Can you tell us, Marara? Oh, I've done quite a lot today. I think I'll give somebody else a chance. <laughs> OK. So who wants to try? What is 4 times 3? Yes, Kamau. The answer is 12. 12. OK, so we write our 2 under the 3, and then we carry our 1, OK? We put it on top of the 5. Uh, Teacher Pendo? Yes? But what happens to the 1? Don't worry. We just put it on top of the 5 and leave it there for the time being. Then now we multiply the bottom number with our 10's number, which is? 5. So what is 5 times 3? Yes, Rawia? 15. 15. Now, you remember we had carried 1 from the 12. So now we need to add our 1. So 15 plus 1 is? 16. 16. So we write our 16 right here. So what does it read? 162. 162. Excellent. So what is 54 multiplied by 3? 162. Oh, so it's very important to remember where we wrote the numbers. That's right. It's now time to get creative on Absol.
on the phone. Hi, children. Do you like my mask? Well, the great thing is I can show you how to make one. To begin with, you're going to start out with a balloon. So for now, I start with making the shape of my mask. And if you want to measure the size of your face, you can kind of use your hand and it'll give you idea of the size. Remember, you're going to be using plenty of glue and water and I'm going to mix it up with some clean water. Let me just mix that up properly. And now I'm just going to take some old newspapers and we're just going to cut into strips. And then bring back my balloon. Here's my glue with water. So I take my newspaper, I dip it in and I just stick it on the balloon and you can get really messy and it's fun. If you can do two layers, finish one and add some more on top, even better, because you want it to be very strong. So once you've done all that, covered it two times, just let it dry. You're going to have to be patient and wait. So what we're going to do is just cut right through it. Don't worry about the balloon. Even if it makes a sound, it's fine. So I'm going to use this for my mask and the balloon, which is in there, goes away. Now I'm going to put in some features. So I take heavy paper. I just fold it in two because I need two ears. I make a chunky ear. And just cut around that shape. So those right there become my two ears. Okay, so I'm going to make the horns and I just cut right through this. So that looks like a cow. So now I have to actually stick that stuff on there. Stick on my ears and horns. So now I need to put in some eyes and nose. I'm going to keep using the masking tape. Take quite a lot of it, roll it up into a messy bowl, and then I'm going to use it as an eye. And then I'm going to stick this on there as well. If I want a broad nose like a cow, I just cut my nail paper. Fold it over like that. Then I'm going to take my masking tape and just put this together. So that comes my cow's nose. And stick it around here. That's good. And you'll notice your ears and horns are still moving around. I'll show you how we'll make it straight, okay? I go back to my newspaper strips and water with glue. What it does is it unifies it. When you keep doing this until it dries and you get something like this. So now, now I just start painting over this. I cover everything. But it doesn't really look like a cow. You need to see the features. Once the eyes are in, you'll really start to see a cow. And I'm just going to put marks around it. I hope you've learned how to make an easy mask. All you need is just a lot of newspaper, a lot of blue masking tape, and patience, because you've got to wait for it to dry quite a bit. Okay, well, let me say goodbye and play with my mask. Bye. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was brilliant. I would like to make a lion mask. What for? You're already a lion. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'd like to make myself look much fiercer. That would be really, really scary. Ah, <laughs> That's a good idea, Marara. But I can think of something even scarier. And what's that? It's time for spell it. Animal. Animal. Chapter. Building. Narrow. Building. Respect. 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 Deep. Vegetable. Work. 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 Welcome to spell it. Kai Kai, Kamau, and Suchenga. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light to compete for the top prize of the Nozon Spelling Champion, in which the winner will go home with their very own Nozon Dictionary. Now, each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say repeat, and it will be repeated for you. Now, each correctly spelt word is worth one point, which means the more words you spell correctly, the more points you have. Are the rules clear? Yes. Kai Kai, you're up first. Please, take your place on the spelling zone. Kai Kai. Yes? Your 30 seconds start now. Soil. S-O-I-L. Work. W-O-R-K. Farm. F-A-R-M. Donkey. D-O-N-K-E-Y. Manure. M-A-N-U-E-R-E. -E. Hedge. 
H-E-D-G-E. -E. Rural. R-U-R-A-L. Vegetable. V-E-G-E. -E. Time's up. Time up. Well done, Kai Kai. Okay, very good. Step back. Well done. Kamal, you're up next. Please, take your place on the spotlight. Kamal, yes. your 30 seconds. Start now. Seed. S-E-E-D. Goat. G-O-A-T. Ho. H-O-E. Tractor. T-R-A-C-T-O-R. Animal. A-N-I-M-A-L. Dignity. D-I-G-N-I-T-Y. Country. C-O-U-N-T-R-Y. Domestic. D-O-M-E-S-T-I-C. Cultivate. C-U-L-V-A-T-I-E. Time up. Well, well done, Kamal. Kamal. Step back. Very good. Suchenga, so you're up next. Please, take your place on the spelling zone. Suchenga, so your 30 seconds start now. Cow. C-O-W. Fence. F-E-N-C-E. Tired. T-I-R-E-D. Plow. P-L-O-U-G-H. Chicken. C-H-I-C-K-E-N. Farmer. F-A-R-M-E-R. R. Dairy. D-A-I-R-Y. Wheelbarrow. W-E-E-L-B-A-R-R-O-W. Cultivate. C-U-L-T. I V A. -T -E. Time up. Well done, well done Sichenga. Step back. Very good. That was possibly the closest spell it that we have had so far. I'll start in reverse order. In third place, with six points, we have Kai Kai. So everyone, please give a round of applause. <laughs> Good. Well excellent, done. Excellent. In second place, with seven points, Sichenga, which means Good. the well spell it champion for today with eight points is Kamal. <laughs> <laughs> Kamal, Good. you are today's no zone. Spell it champion. You're welcome. Very good. <laughs> well Round done. Applause, Congratulations to all of you. It's now time to relax with the story. Here is African Tales. I hope you're sitting comfortably. I'm going to read you a very special story. It's about a very proud and mean pig. Don't forget to look out for this week's buzzwords. So, here we go. There once was a farm where a plump, strong and very proud pig lived. Mr. Pig's farm was so vast that it crossed over rivers and hills as far as the eye could see. Whenever Mr. Pig grunted, every animal in the farm would fall to their knees, calling him Mr. Boss or Wanamkubwa because he owned the whole farm. The fear made Mr. Pig very happy and he would walk around feeling very proud, swaggering and swaying to the sound of respect. The only animal that did not fear Mr. Pig was his neighbour, Mrs. Hare. You see, Mrs. Hare was a very clever and dignified animal who had bought a small piece of land from Mr. Pig many years ago. Mrs. Hare was also a hard-working farmer. And every morning when the sun would rise, she and her family would carry their farming tools from the shed. Together, they would till their little farm in peace and harmony. It was hard work, but Mrs. Hare was determined to make her farm prosper. 
unlike the lazy Mr. Pig, who didn't like to work. He always complained that he was tired and would prefer to sleep in the mud all day long. Mrs. Hare's farm started to grow large and healthy looking fruits and vegetables. Every animal would stop to admire her produce. She was so clever that she started to sell her harvest, making a lot of money. She used the money to buy a tractor. Now she was able to dig and plow her farm with much less effort. As weeks turned into months, Mrs. Hare became even richer. Soon, she was able to buy herself a fat and healthy cow who produced delicious creamy milk and a donkey who helped carry their harvest to the town market. Both these animals also provided her with dung, which she used to make manure for her crops. All the animals admired Mrs. Hare. When Mr. Pig heard this, it made him very jealous because Mrs. Hare was becoming more popular than him. So one night, Mr. Pig sent his friends, the crafty old goat and the sly mongoose, to eat Mrs. Hare's plants and chase away her new chickens. When Mrs. Hare woke up, she was devastated to see that all her hard work was ruined. Then, one day, there came a famine that engulfed the entire land. Every animal became hungry because the soil was dry and barren. Even Mr. Pig began to starve. The only animals that did not go hungry were Hare's family, because they had wisely stored food in their shed. However, they were a kind family, and they shared their food with the other animals. Seeing the food made Mr. Pig's mouth water. He missed the taste of juicy fruits and succulent vegetables. But even though he was very hungry, Mr. Pig was stubborn and refused to ask his rival, Mrs. Hare, for food. And so he grew thinner and thinner every day. The animals gasped at how Mr. Pig had changed. His grunt was no longer proud and loud. It sounded more like a mouse's squeak. Now the animals laughed at him instead of respecting him. Poor Mr. Pig. The thought of no food made him go crazy, but he was not willing to swallow his pride and ask Mrs. Hare for help. Being a kind neighbor, Mrs. Hare decided to offer Mr. Pig some food, which he ate greedily. When he was full, he felt very guilty for what he had done to Mrs. Hare and asked for her forgiveness. As soon as he was forgiven, the two became friends, and Mr. Pig vowed to become a good farmer instead of a proud one. When the rains finally came, Mr. Pig started to work on his farm until one day it was full of healthy fruits and vegetables. The end. Wasn't that a great story? I hope you enjoyed it. It taught us how important it is to work hard and not to be too proud. Well, I hope to see you all again soon. For now, it's goodbye. Oh, that was such a good story. I'm so glad the proud farmer learned to be kind. <laughs> Me too. Did you all enjoy the story? Yes! And did you all have fun on the No Zone? Yes! yes. You have all been brilliant. I hope you have also enjoyed the show. Join us for a brand new episode next week right here on The No Zone. Come on, everybody, let's say goodbye. Bye! Bye.